See, 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 see how the heat does come out of the top of your head? Look at it. Just coming off of Nate's head there. That's where it escapes. If you have heat in your body and you want to let it out, you take your hat off. Yeah. You know, what you could do is, is you could have a barbecue on that head. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports Island. It's been a little while, but we're back. And look who's here. Sir Poops a lot. Welcome back, Tony. Cheers. It has been a while. It's been a couple weeks. Yes, it has. And you know who else is here? Johnny Ballgame. What's up, everybody? Happy hey, hey, Johnny. holidays to you. Yeah, and uh, Johnny, who, who's playing me in the championship this week? Johnny Ball Game and the big money. Listen, folks, this is what you're getting when you watch this show. You're getting two people going against each other head to head and one other guy who was in the freaking playoffs. I mean, that's what you're getting right now. That's what you're getting. Mm -hmm. And we all had crap years and we're still coming out where we're coming. So, you know. Yeah, I got a bone to pick with you guys on that, especially Chuck. I mean, every week. Yes, this year sucks, dude. <laughs> bullshit, and he's winning every league. Like, I, come uh, on, dude. Come on. It, it is a little bit like that. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the sleeper, the sleeper league that we did the draft on online a um, couple, what, sixteen weeks ago. I'm in the championship in that one. I'm in the championship in my dynasty league, and I'm in the championship in our big pay league. So I, there's not a lot for me to complain about. Although I do bitch every and week. Yeah, you have a lot. <laughs> I, I bitch. I bitched a lot, and uh, a lot of things have happened this year. And that, that's one of my rants for the season was, hey, with this, with all the COVID stuff that's going on, and the injuries, and whether that's related or not, basically it's survival of the fittest. The teams that are fortunate enough to have the least amount of COVID uh, people off each week and least amount of injuries, those are the ones that seem to survive and make it to the championships. And I think I've been a little bit more fortunate than others. I've had a little bit of uh, people go down. But, I I mean, obviously, I've been able to survive the COVID stuff. And here I am in the championship. But I don't feel like I'm really winning this year. I'm just surviving. You know what I mean? Right. Right. feels like that. Yeah. Yeah. If if your guys – excuse me. If if your guys would have went off to, like – if they would have put up numbers like they really should have, you'd be way ahead, not just barely ahead. That's the way I looked at some of your teams. I'm like, yep. you know, you're squeaking by, but you're still winning. So that's good. I, I feel like I'm doing it with smoke and mirrors. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, guys, we appreciate you watching the videos. We do this almost every week. So make sure you hit that like button. It's good for the YouTube algorithm. and helps get our videos out there. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. That way you'll know each and every week when we release these videos. Uh, John, do you have any rants you want to talk about this week? Man, you know me. I, I, I don't want to get off on a rant here. But whatever happened to the word consistency? Remember when you used to have, like, plug-and-play people on your team? Players you could set and forget? How was it mm-hmm. this year? I was having to choose between Lamar Jackson and Taylor freaking Heineke. And I almost made the wrong choice by going with Lamar. And speaking of consistency, right. what about the so-called stars of the first three rounds? How many of you would love to have your draft over again? It was all cr- consistency is a word that should only be uttered in the context of dodo birds, silent movies, and the voting process in America. All a thing in the past. Hey, I got an idea, NFL. What do you say next year? Stars actually start acting like, well, stars. Week in and week out. Thanks. I appreciate that. Now, if you're excusing me, I got to go watch some Charlie Chaplin movies where he's voting and accidentally kills a dodo bird. <laughs> <laughs> I know. The worst. Wow. Oh. How about you, Tony? You got a rant this week? Oh, again, like I say every time, I got about 100, but I'll just go with a, a two or three here. Um, one that killed me in a couple leagues is I was kind of like I, I squeaked into some playoffs in the head-to-head leagues. And by the way, again, this season reassured me how much I, I don't dislike head-to-head. It's fun. But total points still steals the show, man. I, I love sure. total points. 
Yeah. Um, the the Bills running game. If I want to Seahawks too, I want to gouge my eyes out right now with this pen in my right hand. But this dude, okay, I'm, I'm neck and neck, and this guy was forced to play Singletary. I think that what there's two two guys actually I had to play what, two weeks ago and last week. Singletary has sucked all year. As a matter of fact, he does suck. He does suck. But the past couple weeks, the Bills had to turn to him. He put up respectable numbers, and I barely lost because of single carry, who ended up getting tons of carries for like 86 yards and a TD or whatever. Again, not off the chart type of scoring, but, but enough. it still killed me. Enough. To be like, this is the yeah. week. This is the week that Singletary is going to do something. They're going to give him the ball. It sure. happened. So I feel sorry for myself. That's all I'm saying right now. This and is all- the first time anybody's used single carry with him, by the way, because that's brilliant. Where's that been in all of our nicknames? Sure. I think I did at the beginning of the year. Oh, Didn't I? Right. Was it was single carry? I don't know. It's fantastic. Single, single, single carry, Dingle- single carry. Dingleberry. Oh, geez. Yeah. Head to head, Tony. It's killing me. It's head to head. And uh, good news is. You know, I've been listening to a lot of the uh, the radio shows and the TV shows about fantasy football, and there's kind of a, a, a developing theme going on, I'm noticing. They're starting to talk about total points. They're yep. saying, hey, play head-to-head leagues, but you got to get make sure the guy that has the, the highest total point total makes it to the playoffs at the bare minimum. And then other guys are, are clamoring for, hey, why don't we split the pot and pay half for head-to-head and half for total points? And I'm thinking – Revolutionary. We've been talking about this for 15 years. Yeah. We not only have been talking about it, we made it happen in our first, in our big money league. Exactly. Right. Three right. years it's- ago, we didn't have head to head people. Three years ago, we didn't have it. Last couple of years, we've had it, and it's been fantastic. It's been a nice addition. It doesn't take away from the total points. Total points still gets most of our money, but we got a little head to head to make it interesting and keep more people involved. For example, Chuck's winning the whole damn thing, points and everything on his then. I'm fifth in total points, but I'm in the championship head to head. Kind of made it fun. Kind of made it a little right. Sad. A little bit of both. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I got I got buddies in the head to head leagues that are just like, yeah, but that's not like real football. You know, you got a team against a team, and they win. I'm like, yeah, but first of all, it's not real football. Second of all, I'm playing Pat Mahomes, Deontay Johnson, and Najee Harris. They're not on the same team in yeah, real football. The, so what are you talking about? Unless you're coaching about? the Pro Bowl team. Right, uh, it, it doesn't like real football at all. It's yeah. not real football, so it's right. you. You should get rewarded for drafting the right players at the right time when you start them. Waivers, whatever you should, you should just get rewarded for that, and that's what total points is all about. Putting it also, together. Tony, I can't, I can't play defense against you. So when you're talking about a matchup head to head, it's not really absolutely head-to-head. just absolutely. who scores the most points. Oh, by the way. Who scores the most points? That should be who wins your league. That's yeah. that's what that's what fit. And it's the same with like baseball and rotisserie. You know, you you do have all those, you know, RBIs, home runs, or whatever. It's whoever gets the most home runs, you know, whoever gets the most RBIs, it, it's the most points. So whatever. You guys ever done a rotisserie chicken league? Because that sounds delicious. I gotta be honest with you. I'm hungry now. Two times, two times. Yeah, I choked on a bone once and it kind of kind of ruined it. <laughs> the bad be the first time you had a bone in there. What? Who said that? <laughs> Definitely not. This is also probably the first time we've taped this show prior to eating dinner. I think we're all pretty hungry. Truth. We're all hungry. <laughs> Good point. Oh, all right. Man. For tonight's show, we're going to do something a little different. We are going to do our normal segments like the, the news and notes around the NFL, of course. Sure. And we're going to do our fantasy heroes and zeros. But for the Fantasy Heroes and Zeros, not only are we going to do last week's Heroes and Zeros, we're going to do our Fantasy Heroes and Zeros for the entire season. And then we're going to go on and talk about some of our bold predictions that we made earlier this year and how those panned out. And I know that we just threw out a bunch of bold predictions, and some of them were going to be completely wrong, and that's fine. But we actually got some ones right. And I'm going to show you. A couple, yeah. Yeah, we nailed a few of them. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about the ones we completely whiffed on. But, hey. I thought we did pretty good on the bold predictions, to be honest, and you'll okay. see later in the show. So, nice. you guys are ready to roll? We can get going on the next segment. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. News and notes around the NFL. 
News and notes around the NFL. We start off with this segment every show, and we just want to go over the what's going on in the league and as it you know pertains to, to fantasy. The first story, though, is not going to pertain to fantasy football, and that's the tragic death of John Madden, uh, a football legend. Um, John Madden died suddenly. They haven't determined the cause of death yet, but um, it's a sad story. John Madden is football for me. I remember growing up watching John Madden um, coach the Raiders, and then I saw him go in the broadcast booth and change, like revolutionize color commentary. And then I saw him go into the video game industry and create a game that's lasted 25, 30 years, you know, Madden football. The guy's a, this guy's a legend. Is, is he – and does he basically in, encapsulate what the NFL is to you, John? Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, he had three distinct – brilliant careers like most people just want to have one really great career he had a super bowl winning coaching career he had an emmy award winning unbelievable broadcast brought people who knew about football and didn't know about football brought them all together and could talk to any of them and make them love football and just how excited he got and then he goes and he revolutionizes the gaming industry he's an old dude that revolutionized the gaming industry i mean that guy Three Hall of Fame careers in three different time frames, and the rest of us are just trying to have one really good career. So, yeah, he's he is football. That's true. And don't forget beer commercials. He was That's, even great in commercials. It's fantastic. Yeah, he was. He was awesome. And he's a fantastic guy. I mean, every person that's ever met John Madden yeah. has the same thing to say about him. He was a genuinely excitable, fun, lovable guy to be around. And that's, I heard you know, somebody he was a say, the next person you hear say something bad about John Madden will be the first person who's ever said something bad about John Madden. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I, I've never heard anyone say anything bad about him. So no, true. I'm sure the woke generation will find some reason to try to, you know, get rid of him later. Yeah. He didn't wax his eyebrows kind of thing. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, on to some fantasy football news. Lamar Jackson, he practiced yesterday, was seen limping quite a bit, and today he missed practice. And I know this is relevant for you, Johnny Ballgame, because you have I'm a big Tony. decision to make in our matchup. Like, yeah. are you going to play Lamar Jackson or not? What do you think? Is he going to play this week? I find it really hard to believe he's going to play. He, every, uh, I saw three different reporters report how noticeably he was limping, like bad limping. Uh, and then, like I said, he didn't even make it to practice today. So. I think it's going to be uh, uh, what's for Hundley, and I think because uh, I think he comes off the COVID list on Thursday is what I heard, and uh, I actually think you could do worse, right? I mean, I, I, I might start him, so I, I've got to make a choice between him and Tua, and I kind of feel like they're the same person, so I just got to go with figure out what I want to do, who they're playing, and uh, and what I want to go with. So, who does Miami play? So, oh, um, Miami plays Tennessee in Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee in Tennessee. And Tennessee's defense has looked way better than last week. Yeah, they have. Yeah. You can still score on them, but they definitely look better. You can. And it, if you're going to do anything passing on them, it's probably the better thing, so you can't run on them anymore. All right. All right, let's, uh, let's look at some more news. The NFL uh, changed the rules for COVID, um, quarantine rules. Basically, they dropped it from if you test positive and you're not vaccinated, you don't have to wait 10 days anymore. Now it's five days. And that goes whether you're vaccinated or not. So any player that goes on the COVID list can get off the list in five days. Do you think that will help? Obviously, it will help some of the players get back sooner, but it helps the unvaccinated players like Cole Beasley even more. What do you think, Tony? Is this, a you know, it's CDC guidelines, but I think this could really help, like, make it more possible for players to play in the games when they wouldn't have. It's mainly for asymptomatic players, right? Is that, is that what they were saying? Yes. Correct. Yeah. You can't have yeah. a fever. You can't have, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. But um, yeah, I mean, it's a little late for that. Well, no, it's not late. I wish they would have done it sooner. Yeah. Uh, but who knows? Nobody knows what's going on with this virus still two years into it. Um, but, you know, I'm happy about it personally and we're getting ready to go to the playoffs. So, it makes me more optimistic about the playoffs and not having people 
uh, miss because of COVID. There's a, a higher percentage of chance that they're going to get to play. So for us as fans, I'm excited about it. Yeah, I think it helps a lot. Uh, it's it's for the playoff run. Obviously, the NFL made this change because the last three or four weeks has been a disaster. Like, a lot of star players are not playing in games, and it's not good for fantasy. It's not good for the product on TV. It's not mm -hmm. good for the NFL in general. And I think this is a wise decision that could help uh, get some guys back on the field. So I'm, I'm a little more excited um, about the upcoming last two weeks of the season and the playoffs. I think there'll be less people missing games, and that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Now, on the flip side, John, do you think this helps spread the virus even more? Because some of these guys, I don't know. What do you think, John? Look, one in four players have been tested positive with COVID. Almost none have been sick. Like a few of them have been sick. Almost all of them were asymptomatic. It's the flu season. It's COVID season now. It is what it is. If you're gonna get sick, you're gonna get sick. I don't think five to ten days is gonna make any kind of difference. So just let them come back and do what they're doing. It's a it's a league in which they're supposed to be 98% vaccinated in the first place. So, you know, we could get off on a whole different rant, started talking about COVID if you want me to go that way, but, but I don't. Uh, but I digress. So no, I think it's I don't think it'll spread it any faster. That's already been going like wildfire through most people's uh, camps anyway. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah. All right, a couple injuries to talk about. Um, I lost one of them. James Robinson yes. finally tore his ACL or his uh, he tore his Achilles. He's out for the season. Um, does anybody else have James Robinson besides me? No. Nope. Nope. Tell us how it affects you, though, Chuck. <laughs> well, he's one of my running backs. So uh, the best part is I don't have to worry about playing him anymore. Uh, I'll just play uh, Damian Harris instead, and that's fine with me. <laughs> but uh, you know, when it takes away your depth, you gotta you, you gotta worry about it. I don't have the ability to play three running backs at the moment because those were my three running backs. I had Chubb, Robinson, and Damian Harris. So now I only have two. So now I gotta go three wide receivers. It makes things a little tighter for me. Honestly, you might not have played him this week anyway, going against the Patriots defense. So I don't probably know. not much of a difference for you this, this week. Yeah. Honestly, John, I like the fact that he's out for the year now because I've been playing him because he's a starting running back in the NFL, but he really hasn't been doing anything in the last three, four weeks since he's, you know, had the injury yeah. problems. Yeah. So now I don't have to think about it anymore, and that's kind of a load off my shoulders, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame him. Yeah. Fantasy Heroes and Zeros. Let's talk about some fantasy heroes and fantasy zeros. And we're going to start with last week's fantasy heroes and fantasy zeros. John, I want to start with you. You give me a hero from last week. We're only going to do one of each. Tell me who was your hero last week. David Montgomery. Welcome back, sir. Uh, he didn't get a ton of yardage on the ground. But what he did get was a bunch of catches and a touchdown. Ended up in our league with like 29 points. Uh, really saved me, quite frankly. Made my week. Yeah, he uh, he helped you get through your matchup too, so that you could meet me in the championship. So exactly. way to go, David Montgomery. All right, yep. Tony, who was your hero last week? Everybody's hero, Joe Hero Burrow. He <laughs> was amazing, dude. He was amazing. He was fun to watch. Um, what what do you say? Just look at his numbers. He was amazing. I'm I'm hoping that it really pumped up Cincy that they don't turn. Kansas City into like the Jets game this week, um, which I don't think they will. I think they're really getting their crap together. So he was amazing, dude. It was exciting. And for my future of being a huge Bengals fan, I'm excited for him. I got to say something about it. I was at the game. I, I don't get to go to live football games all that often these days. And I was at the Bengals game. And I, I've i been around for a while. Let's just say I just turned 52 years. <laughs> so I've happy been, birthday. I've been watching football. Thanks uh, for a while. Uh, that was the most exciting game I've ever watched in person. And it was so much fun. And the Bengals are really a fun, fun team. They have so many weapons. That trio of receivers that they have rivals anyone in the NFL. I mean, you th Tyler Boyd's their third best. And that guy caught a nice long touchdown, had a bunch of real critical catches. That, that whole team is just fantastic. And it reminds me of the Chiefs before the Chiefs became the Chiefs. 
like the year before they came, everybody's like, oh, they got good. It was a fun watch. And then they became the Chiefs. That's what I think the Bengals are. The Bengals get a couple of offensive linemen to go. Uh, they're going to be something special. Sorry, I didn't mean to go off on that. Thing. Next. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Oh, uh, all right, guys. My hero. You guys know who I'm going to say. I had a couple heroes, actually. You know, Debo again and Josh Allen again. But I'm going with Damian Polaris because he's turning into a star. Man, this guy, 100 yards and three touchdowns came through big time for me. Uh, helped me dominate my matchup. Uh, even if I, you know, in the in our league, John, it didn't matter if I played Damian Harris or not. But it did matter in the sleeper league, Tony. He got me yeah. over the hump. Took care of uh, the team named Token Mex. Took him out. He was he had the best record in our league, and I was able to beat him. Thank you. That was huge. huge. That was Damian. huge. Dude, you that beat both huge. teams that had the most score this week, right? In both those leagues. I did. I did. So I. I obliterated um, the team that was leading in our big money league, 225 to 97. So not only yeah. did I knock him out of the head-to-head, -head, but I passed him in the total points as well. Um, yeah. Actually, yeah, he wasn't jewelry, first. Yeah. I don't think he was first, actually. I think he was second. He was, no, no, he was first. Chimichanga was second. No, I, I beat Chimichanga, though. You beat Quack Attack. Oh, you beat Changa. Oh, I beat Quack Attack. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. John took I out the number one team. Bad. Yeah, I took out the highest point. That's right. Now you got to take out the one. Can you take out the number one team two weeks in a row, Johnny? Two weeks in a row? Baby. Coming for me, right? If, if I do, it'll be the second year in a row I do it because that's what happened last year in head to head, too. I took out the top team. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Yeah. We talked about the hero. Now we have to have one zero from last week. I'll start with you, Tony. Who was your zero? Well, I'm, I'm throwing two in there. I'm throwing a whole group of them. <laughs> I like to say the Steelers in general, but the Steelers, <laughs> Steelers wide receivers. I know, I know Ben has a lot to do with that. But those guys are like Deontay Johnson's fumble. Claypool doesn't even look right to me at times when he's running routes. They seem erratic and kind of like yeah. not together as a team, man. That whole thing, they, they need to reboot. Roethlisberger is going to retire. And we'll see what happens next year. But my zeros are the Steelers' wideouts. They killed me this year. So uh, just to add to your little where you said Roethlisberger is probably going to retire, it sounds like he is going to retire. He there is, was a report yeah. today where he said that this will most likely be this week's right. uh, last game at Heinz Field. So I think he knows the writing's on the wall, and this will be it. So, yeah. All right, John, your zero. My zero, I had two I was going to go with, but one I'm going to go with for the season, so I'll go with the other one. Marquise Brown, I was at the game. I was going to watch it. I was all set. I was. I, it was going to be fun. I was going to watch my guy. I already knew Landry was, or uh, Lamar wasn't going to play, so I thought, yeah, at least I get to watch my receiver. And I, I thought, you know, the uh, Joe Webb, I thought that guy could get it to him. No, nope, not so much. He, he got three. He dropped one sure touchdown. Uh, uh, the only good news about this is every time he has a game like this, the next week he goes off. Chuck, watch out. That's all I'm saying. Um, <laughs> this week. All right. Uh, my zero is pretty simple. I didn't have anyone not go off on my team except James Robinson, and that's because he got hurt. But he got hurt um, blocking on a play. You know, he wasn't even – he didn't even have the ball in his hands, and it happened in the first quarter, and he had one point. And he went out, and he's done. And we always talk about a real hero will get you all those points before he gets hurt. James Robinson got me just one point and then exited. And actually, when it happened, I thought, oh, my God, I'm screwed. But I wasn't. Uh, but, you know, he's still a zero for me. So, anyway, let's talk about and encompass the entire season now. And let's go two each. Two fantasy heroes for your team this season and two fantasy zeros. All right, Tony. Let's start with you. Who? Let's go. Let's go. Fantasy hero. One of your two. Give it to me now. One of my two for the season. Yeah. What you're asking? Well, I'm going to go Mixon. You know, and again, I keep going back to you know, back to the Bengals. But you know, at the beginning of the season, you guys remember I was a little bit leery on him. I was kind of up and down. Johnny kept going, dude. He's going to have a big year. You got to grab him. Um, and I slept on it one night, and I was like, all right, if he comes to me, I'm going to grab him. And I did in a couple of weeks. Um, so I'm really happy about Mixon. 
very happy about Mixon, as a matter of fact. So that is fantastic. Um, now we get to see what they're going to do in the playoffs. I'm excited about that. I hope Mixon stays healthy. Yeah, I do too. Uh, I have him in Dynasty, so he's been huge, and he's had a great season. So big time hero. Good job, Mixon. All right, Johnny Ball game. Give, give it to us. Who's one of your heroes? It's a guy I didn't even draft. I didn't even draft him. Pick this fellow up, Cordero Patterson. And yeah. no, gone off off for the last couple of weeks, but he's certainly been a giant member of my team. He's the he's number ten running back in fantasy points this year. Uh, I, I honestly, I, I don't know where I'd be without him. So I certainly would not be in the championship game of the head to head matchup without him. So Cordero Patterson. I, I think it's so awesome that they found a new life for you. Yeah, you were a great special teams guy this whole time, but just to be used that way was fantastic. Nice. Yeah. Uh, anybody that picked up Cordero, Corder, we call him Score Daryl Patterson. Anyone that picked That's up right. Score Daryl Patterson right. is happy this season. Uh, he basically, from the dust, came out and, and had a great fantasy season. He's a top 10 running back. It's incredible. Mm. All right. You guys know who I'm going to pick first. And that's the Stallion, Josh Allen. After week one, I had Aaron Rodgers in my big money league. And we watched him basically put up a zero and quit on his team in the fourth quarter and take himself out of the game. And that's all I needed to see. I said, I'm trading this son of a bitch. I need to get me a real quarterback who's a trooper, a hero. And I went out and traded and got Josh Allen. Now, I had to give up Austin Eckler to get him. But it was worth it because Josh Allen has been tremendous. Almost every week, the only week I can remember that he didn't come through was against the Patriots in that poor weather game. Josh Allen's been amazing. Uh, I think he's quarterback number two right now, and he's breathing down Brady's neck for number one. So I'm super happy. He is my hero. I love Josh Allen. Can't wait to see what he does this week. All right, Tony, give me another hero. Um, this is crazy. Another guy, like Johnny, I did not draft this guy. Got him in a couple leagues. And that's Renfro for Vegas. Um, I don't even know who this dude is. He's this <laughs> wide receiver, started off with like some slant patterns here and there, had a couple decent games. I'm like, got some injuries early in the season. Like, I got to grab him. And he went bonkers from there. Every week it was like, I need something from this guy. And he put up numbers. And he made it exciting. He had some, you know, pretty good rapport with Carr. And he, he, he made us kind of want to uh, – watch Vegas actually play a little bit, especially after that uh, car accident with rugs, which was really, uh, you know, a sad time. And Renfro stepped up and has been money all season long. All right. All right, Johnny Ballgame. Give me another hero. I got a hero. And I, I don't ever think I would have thought to put a defense in this category before this season, but this defense has come through for me. Time and time again, I'm counting on them this week. Big time against the Jaguars. It's the New England Patriots defense. They've been fantastic. I mean, just, I don't know, like every week that I have used them. And again, there's been a few weeks I don't use them because I've got a better matchup maybe with the Broncos. But they're the number two defense in the league for a reason. Wow. Number two points getting defense. And not by much. The Dallas Cowboys being the other one, which, by the way, I have in two other leagues. So defensive-wise, I'm doing pretty good this year. So, yeah. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. A defense as a hero, like, you know, that's fantastic. Yeah. Crazy. Right. Yeah. Now, here's a guy I took in the ninth round. I had low expectations for him because we were, we were all high on Brandon Ayuk coming off of last year. But I knew that, you know, until he got hurt the year before, Debo flashed. Okay. And so I, I figured, you know, I'm going to take him in the ninth round, see what happens. Little did I know this guy would be, I believe he's wide receiver two or three right now, and he missed a week. So, he, you know, if it wasn't for Cooper Cup <laughs> having that tremendous season, Debo would be like the best receiver in football. Debo has been incredible every week. It doesn't matter who the quarterback is. It doesn't matter if he's running the ball or catching passes on, you know, slants and taking them to the house. Every week he makes a big play, and he usually scores a touchdown. I've, I've been – I keep waiting – for Debo to fall short, and he never does. He somehow comes through every single week. So Debo's my hero. Absolutely. I agree with you, man. He's almost like 
support Daryl, only like more talented and younger. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The way they use them is very similar. You're right. Yeah. All right. Now we got to talk about some zeros. There's going to be a million of these. But <laughs> so I can talk, talk all about, day. Talk about, let's talk about the two guys that hurt us the most that we had expectations for, right? Who you got, Tony? Who's your first zero? This one pains me, pains everybody, and he's still amazing. But Patty Mahomes, you know, he's had some big games. He's finishing strong right now. Uh, the, the, the team's got their shit together. They're going to kick some ass, and they are kicking ass. But Patrick Mahomes killed me. He ruined my season. And um, I had him in two leagues, and that's a big pick, um, you know, a top pick, a first pick. And, you know, it hurt my team. So I hate calling this guy a zero because he's an incredibly talented young dude. But for me personally, this year, he was a big, fat zero. And what's funny is he's quarterback four. <laughs> yeah. So it's not like he's been terrible. But for him, he's been terrible. I mean, like, yep. he, he, he has not been the, the normal Patty Mahomes that we're used mm -hmm. to seeing. Mm -hmm. Right, so, right, and you have to draft him in the second, third round, or sometimes first round, depending on what leagues you're in. Mm -hmm. And he just didn't return that that draft capital this year. He came up short. Yep. All right, John, give me a zero. Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley, number one wide receiver. Everyone had him high on their boards. I had him really high on my boards. Like I targeted him, wanted him bad. Was so excited to get him. And just a huge step backward when he was playing and then just stopped playing, just quit. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's much more I can say about that. But I will say when you spend that high of a draft pick on a wide receiver, uh, you need him to pay off. And uh, he, he just he, he broke my heart. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Almost single-handedly run my season. Okay. Good. Uh, mine's easy. I mean, the first one. It, it's a guy I thought was going to finish in the top 10. He's coming off his rookie year, a lot of talent, and that's Chase Claypool. Chase Claypool has been an absolute disappointment. I've only been able to play him twice. I played him once early in the season. He came up small. I played him again uh, because I had to because of COVID and buys and all kinds of stuff, and he did okay. I think that was the game where Pittsburgh uh, made that um, monumental comeback and then came up a little short where he was uh, – Because you know, of him? Yeah. yeah, partly because of him and wasting time celebrating when he got a first down. But Chase Claypool, other than that, has been pretty bad all year. And I don't know if it's just Roethlisberger. Uh, maybe if they had a better quarterback, it would be different. But, hey, fantasy purposes, Chase Claypool has been pretty much a zero for me all season. I still have him rostered, but I don't use him. So that's my guy. All right, Tony, one more zero. Uh, I got a list of like 10. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to go with – he's been okay, but, again, it's like Pat Mahomes. Just the numbers were not there for, the, for being a number one pick, and that's Aaron Jones. Yeah. He had uh, a minor injury, but he's just been like, you know, mediocre. You know, you, he's had some games that are pretty decent, but just not enough. Not for, not for a first round. Not for where you drafted him, yeah. No, I mean, I, I have Mahomes – him, you know, I think I got him, what, first and Mahomes second? And mm. both of them were technically failures for me. And I had Aaron Jones in three leagues. And, yeah, not where you drafted him. It's a shame. Mm. Mm. It is a shame. All right, Johnny, give me a zero. I didn't, I didn't draft this guy terribly high, but I just had high expectations for him because Cleveland was supposed to be so much better. Uh, and then when they got rid of OBJ, he's supposed to, you know, here's the main target. Here's the guy. And I'm getting ready to say, you know what, Reaper, come and get this guy. It's Jarvis Landry. He's done, he's done nothing. Talk about just a zero year. Nothing. If he hasn't been injured, he's been on COVID. If he hasn't been on COVID, he just sucks. Like, there's not a game where I go, ah, Jarvis is back. Where, where's Jarvis Landry? And don't get me started on Robinson for the Bears. I, I didn't even have him on my team, and I want to punch that guy in his face. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Sorry, Chuck. It's up to you now. Okay. Well, you guys are you guys are going to be totally in support of this one because we all have him in leagues. 
Um, and we were super high on him. And that's Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk is Brandon Ayuk. He's until about week 10 or so, he started to come on a little bit. Awesome. But overall, he's been awful. And if you had him the first six to eight weeks of the season, you probably dropped him. And now you're watching yeah, him kind of do some stuff for another team. But he was garbage. He was unplayable. And I don't trust him. I wouldn't play him in the playoffs. I don't trust him going forward. Brandon Ayuk was an absolute zero. A waste of a yeah. draft pick. Yep. yep. All right. Week 17 matchups for the championship. Let's talk about some week 16 Actually, week 17 matchups, and this is championship week. So let's go through some big games, talk about what you know what we're looking for and guys that maybe we could pick up on the waiver wire. And we're going to start here. Let me take a look at the list of games. Um, let's start with this one. This is the big one. We got the Chiefs at the Bengals in Cincinnati. Chiefs are 11-4, and four, Bengals are 9-6. and six. You know, coming off that massive game from Joe Burrow and T. Higgins, which was incredible that Johnny Ballgame got to go to. Um, what do we think about this game? It's an over-under of 51, and the Chiefs are favored by five. I want to start with you, John. What are you looking for? Doesn't this feel like one of those, though, where you go, oh, it's going to be so high scoring. It's going to be so high scoring that it ends up being like a 23-13 clunker. Um, I think – here's what I do think about the Bengals. I think the Bengals play to their competition. That's why they lose games like the Jets. That's why they lose those kind of things. Uh, but they seem to play better against the better teams. And I actually kind of like the Bengals today. Uh, now, the Chiefs' defense is playing much better than it was. Um, but can still be thrown on. They can still be, get beat deep. And that's where the Bengals kind of, you know, go at it. So I also think you'll get a lot of Joe uh, Joey Mixon out of the backfield. I don't think he's going to run a ton. But I think he'll get some catches and, uh, and make your fantasy that, that way. On the Chiefs side, eh, I'll let Tony talk about the Chiefs. <laughs> before I get to the Chiefs, Tony, before I get to the Chiefs, yeah. I want to ask you, do you think Joe Burrow is going to put up huge numbers two weeks in a row and T. Higgins? I want to know, would you play these guys next week? Like, for instance, I have, you know, I have Herbert and I have Joe Burrow. Oof. Would you play Herbert or would you play Joe Burrow this week, knowing what you Who's know happened last week? Well, okay, Bengals have been kind of, not, not totally, but kind of an every other week team. They yeah. are playing at home, and they do have the competition. Like Johnny was saying, it seems like when uh, there's a big game, they tend to play the division games, too. They didn't play the Browns well, from what I remember, but you know, they played the Steelers pretty well. They played the Ravens pretty well. Um, you know, But you're still talking every other game, so it makes me nervous. Um, who who are the Chargers playing? By the way, I don't even know. I haven't been looking at the games. Let me take a look. I have I have the list right here in front of me. Denver. And they're playing Denver. They're playing the Broncos in San Diego. We'll, we'll get to in that San game. San Diego. You yeah. might have to play Herbert. But um, here's the thing about the, the 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 Chiefs and the Bengals. I see a lot of similarities here. They to me they seem if you if unless you take out the tight end situation, Kelsey, they're they're kind of evenly matched teams. The defenses are both coming on, decent defenses. A little bit of holes in the offensive line. QBs are putting up similar numbers. Running game is kind of similar. I, I expect Daryl Williams to go off, personally. I think they're going to run the hell out of him in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. um, but every time I make these lame predictions, it's the other <laughs> way around. So um, I don't think it's going to be a big scoring game either. I, I, I Not really. I think it's going to be mediocre. I think both teams are going to go in a little bit conservative. Maybe, uh, like I said, Chiefs try and run the ball a little bit more. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I like I like Herbert though this week. I'm I'm probably going to play Herbert. He's I'm going to stick with what got me there. I've been playing Herbert most weeks, and you know Herbert's been I, great overall. I, so I got to say though, Denver Denver's pretty damn good. Denver's they good. are. They are. Save that because we'll get to that game right, in just a minute. Okay, okay. <laughs> Next game, Dolphins at the Titans. This is, a, this is a big, big game for both teams. Uh, Dolphins are on that playoff bubble. Titans are 10-5. and five. Dolphins 8-7. and seven. It's in Tennessee. Tennessee's favored by 3.5. Over-under is 39.5, which means it sounds like it's going to be a low-scoring game. Dolphins' defense has been lights out for weeks. Mm -hmm. 
Titans defense has been good too. So I could see this being low scoring. Who do you trust more in this game? Tua, Tagliavoa, or do you trust Ryan Tannehill? I'm going to start with you, Tony. What do you think? Uh, I'm going with the Titans at home. I think that they're, I don't think it's going to be another, yeah, it's not going to be high scoring either, but um, I think that they're going to come out of the gate, score a couple touchdowns the first half, the Titans, that is. They're going to be up by a touchdown or two, and they're going to ride out the second half. I think that they're going to, they're going to stop Miami. I don't think two is going to do much. That's just, that's more of my gut, I think. What do you think, John? I don't know if I necessarily agree if I like Tannehill over Tua because I don't think the Dolphins' defense is incredibly underrated. That defense back, awesome. back, they're coming back from COVID. Um, I, Tua manages to get points every week. He does. I, I don't know how. He, he does. And the Titans can get beat deep. The Titans, and he's just finding Waddle everywhere, who's an unbelievable rookie sensation. So I actually like the Dolphins in this game, uh, even though I, you know, I really like the Titans living here in Tennessee. I love them. Uh, but I feel like the, the Dolphins have a little bit more than what they're playing for, and I think they'll uh, they'll come out on top. So Waddle is a low-key hero for me this season as well. Um, I've lately had to play him a lot um, because of injuries and COVID and all that stuff, and he's come through every time. Every time I've played him, he's eight, nine catches, you know, sometimes 10 catches, 100 yards, you know, gets a touchdown. I mean, yeah. the guy's been fantastic. I expect more of the same against the Titans. And if you noticed, when Waddle plays, Devontae Parker is a, he's a zero. I mean, they don't even yes. zero targets. Uh, Tua loves his t college teammate Waddle, and he looks for him every time. That's yeah. the recipe yeah. for that's a Cooper Cup type recipe for success. That's you know, true. <laughs> yeah. all right. I can see Waddle being a very very good player in the next five, six, seven, eight years. He's going to be a target monster. I'd love to get him again next year. That's all I'm saying. This week, I, I think he's going to be well as well. So, um, who do we do we think the Titans are going to win this game? Because I actually think the Dolphins are going to win this game. I like I the too. Titans. I'm going to go with the Titans, which like means you guys will win. <laughs> yeah, I like the Dolphins this week. Okay, on to the next. Another playoff matchup here. Two teams kind of on the bubble. You got the Las Vegas Raiders at eight and seven going on the road to Indianapolis, who is nine and six. Colts are favored by seven at home, and there's a reason for that. The over under is forty four and a half, and the reason being is the Raiders when they travel to Indianapolis, they usually don't do well. They usually get blown out. So, do we expect more of that? Yes. As long as Wentz is playing, right? He's probably going to play. Wentz looks like Wentz is going to play. It also looked like Waller was going to play, but Waller ended up on the COVID list. Now it doesn't look like Waller's going to play. And that's a big that's a big loss for the Raiders. They need that guy. Uh, they need all their weapons. I mean, Carr's been okay, but, you know, since the Henry Ruggs thing and Waller getting hurt, you know, all he's got is Renfro, and you need more than that if you're going to go in and beat Indianapolis, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think Taylor runs all over the Raiders. I think they're going to try to get him a record of some kind this week. Um, they, they they just don't need anybody else on the Colts. The, Ra the Raiders just aren't very good. Uh, I think I think play Taylor. I wouldn't play Lance by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not even sure I'd play any of the receivers. Any, I don't think I'd play anybody else from that team. And I'm not sure I'd play any Raider. Maybe Hunter. Renko. I got a guy. Who? I got a guy. Now, yeah. don't go pick him up, Johnny. I'm giving you this. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm probably going to pick up Mo Alley Cox. I'm Mo Cox. Getting him. I'm getting him right now. Because guess who's out? <laughs> Jack Doyle's out. So they only have oh. Mo Alley Cox at tight end. I kind of, I'm kind of feeling that, but I haven't picked him up yet. So don't, don't go screw me, Johnny. Yeah. Well, isn't he like six nine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's my thing about him. He's going to pick up Doyle's, what, three catches a game? Oh, all right. Well, he'll have five. So you better hope he gets a Teddy. That's all I'm saying. That's, all That's I'm what I'm counting. But you know what? Since I lost Hawkinson, I've been playing, you know, r Russian roulette with the tight end. So <laughs> do I, do I want to go uh, Foster Moreau again? He got me 10 points last week. I don't trust him. I don't trust him in this either. game. No. I think I want to go with the uh, other side, the home team. I'd go Mo. I'd go Mo Cox. Yeah. Might you do know. that. You know how much you love Mo Cox. <laughs> Man, right. you guys are bringing up a lot of zeros, by the way. 
I just have to interject. Hawkinson, <laughs> Waller, those guys. Yeah. Even, yeah. even, yep. Pitt, even Pittman. Pittman had some decent games. He's been okay. But he, I thought yeah. Pittman was going to have a huge year. I he did, too. Been, I thought he was going to be much better this year. All right, I'll shut up. I'll shut up. No, I mean, that's that's true. Pittman hasn't been that bad, though, but we'll get to that in, in a minute. Okay. He's been okay. Yeah. All right, uh, another great game here. This one is is intriguing to me because the Ravens have been such a mess for a long time with injuries and COVID and stuff. I th- it feels like they were about to get healthy, but now like we're not sure if, if Jackson's going to play. But the Rams are at the Ravens. 11 and 4 Rams at the Ravens who are 8 and 7 and really need this win to get th- into the playoffs. It is uh Rams are favored by 4 and a half and the over under is 46 and a half. What do we think about this game? Wow. I don't know Hunt- Huntley's probably going to get the start, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know, man. Still pretty good, right? Last time I checked, still still pretty up there. Yeah, I mean uh. Yes. Rank. Right? So pretty good. Like, I, I have no idea what to think about this. I guess the Rams defense is only 11 in the uh, total fantasy point scoring. So uh, I can't I think stand the Ravens. the Ravens defense right now. I cannot. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Their defense was, was just so oh, bad. Their defense is awful. Yeah. Yeah. If, if uh, T. Higgins can do what he did, and actually all three receivers did well for Cincinnati, and Burrow just yeah. killed them, what's Cooper Cup going to do? I mean, good lord! Right? He's going to catch. They're going to try to get. They're going to try to get him a record. They're going to try to get him the the single season receiver record. There's no doubt in my mind. And they're going to try this week because they want it done within the normal time frame that the last one was set, as opposed to that extra week. So look for Cooper Cup to be thrown to every single time. I'd bench any running back that had a ram horn on their helmet, and probably any other receiver. Maybe I'd go with OBJ because he'll get some of the the leftovers, uh, but I like Stafford in this game a lot, like a lot. Like if you've got Stafford, you're putting him in because they can't stop anybody. And I, I might consider playing even Van Jefferson because even the third string in that group, uh, you know, could could do – they could pull a Tyler Boyd and, and get a long touchdown and get you 20 now, points. So. You're talking about uh, the Rams pretty much. That's every week for the Rams. Cooper yeah, Cup, but now they're, get 90%. But now they're playing a team where they can really do that. True. Because they suck. Uh, John, are you playing Hollywood Brown? Only because I have to, because of injuries and because Calvin Ridley's a jackass who quit on the team. Uh, I hope he gets better mentally, whatever. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he, uh, I, I need to play Hollywood this week. So I'm praying to God that Hunley goes, I'm just going to hit him another 10 times like I did two weeks ago, and then hopefully he breaks one of those uh, and actually does some more. Good thing. I hopefully he breaks I feel like he he's... breaks his leg, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you who I am going to start. I'm starting. I'm on Ross St. Brown. I won't make that That mistake. kid's awesome. Love that guy. I was on my bench this last week. Yeah, um, me too. Keep an eye on him, though, because I believe he has a slight knee injury, so he's questionable. I shut your think. face mouth. Yeah, I think. So keep an eye on that. <laughs> okay. Here's the game we were talking about. Broncos at Chargers. Seven and eight Broncos at the eight and seven Chargers. Basically, the loser of this game is out of the playoffs, and the winner can, um, you know, improve their chances of making the playoffs. The over-under is 45 and a half. The Chargers are favored by six and a half at home. Chargers, though, got blown out by the Texans last week. So, man, they're hard to predict. What do we think is going to happen here? I think Austin Eckler's back. So I, I I feel like that will give them a boost, and I think like the Chargers are probably gonna destroy the Broncos. That's my personal feeling. But the Chargers can be run on, and you got Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams. If you got them, you got to play both, right? Yeah. yeah, I would. I would. I mean, you saw what Burkhead did, right? I mean, geez, Louise, 150 yards, a couple tutties. I mean, what's Gordon gonna do? What's Javante gonna do? You gotta play him. <laughs> yeah. The last, we, time, uh, we, the last time Chargers and the Broncos played, the Broncos defense put up 29.26 points, so respectable. Um, but I do think the Chargers tend to also, kind of like the Bengals, they play up uh, to their competition. Last week they sucked. Uh, we all thought they should have gone off, but um, I would play anyone with a Charger bolt on their helmet this week. I feel, I feel good about the Chargers. How about you, Tony? 
Yeah, I think so too. I think I think Herbert's going to light them up. I think they're going to be bombing the ball, tossing the ball, throwing the ball, running the ball. <laughs> they're going to do everything. I think they're going to. I think they're going to so destroy. Lots of lots of balls. A lot saying. of balls. A lot of hairy of balls. stuff. Uh, balls and whatever. <laughs> also, uh, the, the new COVID rule might like help Psych Williams. Mike Williams, he might actually get to play when they thought he wasn't mm. going to be able to play because of the, right. the new fight. So. Uh, I don't know if that helps. I don't know if that helps Herbert a lot or not, because you know those two kids, Josh Palmer and uh, Guyton, they, they've both been uh, playing pretty well. So um, yeah. you know, but Mike Williams is a beast. If you throw it up, he's to a him, beast. If you throw it to him in the end zone area, he'll catch a couple tutties. Yeah, in the red zone. So yeah, yep. I think it'll help him. All right, uh, got another game here that's a good. Should be a good one, but it's been a dud. For the Cardinals for several weeks now. Cardinals are ten and five. They need this win to get back on track. But the Cowboys have been playing really good football. They're at home, eleven and four, and the Cowboys are favored by six in an over under of fifty one. Um, I'm just going to ask you, John, what you think first of all. What you saw from Dallas last week, both sides of the ball. Do we expect that to to, to happen? Uh, it's the Cardinals. Yeah, like I, I feel like they're right. They're kind of like rounded into form right at the right time. Um, I think we all knew the offense had that ability to explode. I do think Zeke's getting healthier as the season goes on. Uh, he showed a little bit more, catch a couple passes, got two touchdowns. Um, I think CD will get used more this time. I like them a lot, and you already know how I feel about the Cardinals. So, <laughs> John, <laughs> Kyler Murray just doesn't have any weapons to throw to, and he's been hurt. I mean – I don't know, like, if he had uh, uh, Hopkins, for instance, I, I think it would be a different story. But obviously, he relied a lot on that guy because once that guy got hurt, it's been a different story for the Cardinals offense. But they still have James Conner, who should be back this week, and they have uh, Chase Edmonds. And those guys have been doing pretty good in the meantime. Decent. Sure. I think, sure. I think this game's going to be a lot closer than people think. I think they're going to give the Cowboys a game. What do you think, Tony? Um, you know, you know how I feel about Kyler Murray. Uh, he's awesome. He's dynamic. Uh, but he starts getting beat up by the end of the year and they kind of fade. Um, if, if he has his shit together, they could put up some numbers. They could give him a little bit of run for the money, but I think they're going downhill right now. I don't like me the too. momentum. Going the wrong it worries way. me. It, it disappoints me. And if they don't do something this week, they're finished. They will not do anything else playoffs or not. Um, but my gut is that they're not going to, that Cowboys will take them for sure. My one bright spot for them is uh, Zach Ertz, who's actually come through for me the last couple of weeks in tight end positions. So, yeah, he's going to, he's going to break his pelvic bone this week, John. After he scores Ooh. 55 points. That sounds kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got to talk about this game because it's one of the greatest like matchups in football history. It's fun. The Vikings at the Packers. Minnesota 7-8, and eight, and they're fading fast. They basically need to win out and get some luck to get in the playoffs. Packers are 12-3. and three. They're pretty much locked in the playoffs. But the seed, the seeding still needs to be determined, so they need to win. 7.5 Green Bay's favored by at home. 46.5 is the over-under. And it's supposed to be freaking cold. And it's a primetime Sunday night game on NBC. And those two things alone mean that... Cousins is going to suck. <laughs> Still, Cousins does not play well in prime time. He does not play well in Green Bay, and he doesn't play well in the cold. He's proven that. Does he do something different this week, John, or do we expect more of the same from Cousins? You're here to hear first. Here's my hot take. Vikings going to win this game by 10 points minimum. What? Yes, and here's why. Because the Vikings don't do what they're supposed to do. Like <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like every true. time you think you've got the Vikings picked out, you can figure them out. Oh, yeah. Kirk Cousins is going to go off this week. He's going to throw to <laughs> Jefferson. Oh, I'm sorry. Did Cook run for 200 yards? What the hell just happened? So I think it's, uh, it's going to be one of those weeks where everybody thinks and, – and Aaron Rodgers, about every three to four weeks, has a stinker, has a little bit of a clunker, and I think it's going to come on this night. And only because he started talking about his future again. Right, we start talking about well, yeah. I'm not retiring. I'm not above doing this, yeah. and 
that's never good. Anytime that's happened to the season, he's had a shit game right afterwards. And so what I'm telling you is play your Vikings. Uh, Thielen was put on injured reserve. Can't help that now. Hopefully when I got KJ Osborne, mm-hmm. uh, if you didn't go out and get KJ Osborne, well, then you got stuck with uh, starting Marquise Brown. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I, I totally disagree with you, John. I think Green Bay is going to pounce on them, and <laughs> it's, it's going to be a blowout, I think. I, I just don't week, trust Cousins. Next, next week, I want season. a formal apology. I do, however, think Dalvin Cook's going to have a good game. But, Tony, do you are you do you do have any teams left w- with Dalvin Cook that where he can help you, or are you done? <laughs> no, I lost that one. Damn it. <laughs> I needed which, it. Which means he, he'll he go off. Yeah, which well, means, means he'll, he'll go off this week, Tony. Week. Yeah. <laughs> So there you go. Johnny's going to win. He's got, he's got the <laughs> prediction. The, the Vikings, that was perfect. Like the Vikings don't do what they're supposed to do, which means they're going to kick so some true. ass. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, Chuck, I, I just want to, uh, I want to make sure you have a segment next week called uh, John, you were right. I'm sorry. Uh, so, <laughs> All right. It's a bold prediction. John, you made a bold prediction. Bold Packers. prediction. Packers are going to lose by 10 or more to the Vikings this week. You heard it here yep. first. So we'll see. Bold prediction. Hey, Rolls Royce, remember when you used to come on the show and give us predictions? There's one. Woo! Yeah, you remember him. Rolls Royce. Yeah. Where's Waldo? Yeah. You know, the fellow used to lay in the bed and talk to us about predictions. And- oh, I thought his name was Mercedes or something like that. No. <laughs> I, think, I think it's Hyundai. Hyundai Royce. <laughs> yeah, it's Hyundai. All right. So it's championship week. We wish you all luck, okay? We want you guys to all bring home the championship. Hopefully we helped you in some little way to uh, make a decision here and there that got you to that point. But, uh, John, between you and I, I wouldn't mind losing. If I'm going to lose, I I would like it to be to you. You're my favorite dude, so good luck. Um, I'll tell you what, if you do beat me, as long as I win the total points, I'm good. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that either because then I'd get some cash and you'd get some cash and we all go home a winner. So, uh, yeah, I, I totally agree, man. If I lose to you, it's, uh, I'm, I'm all right with that. But, and now, if I'd have lost to, uh, I don't know, Project Mayhem, for example, uh, you stole Dak, then, you know, then I might have. That would have been I'm different. Still, I love you, Keith. Come on, man. Uh, but no, I, uh, I think we'll have a good, uh, good game this week, I think. Yeah, and Tony, if you were in the playoffs against me, I'd say the same thing, brother. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Bold prediction results. These guys aren't so fucking bad. Let's talk about some big, bold predictions we made earlier this season and talk about, like, which ones we got right and which ones we completely got wrong. Some of them we got pretty close, to be honest. Pretty um, close, actually. I was just I, looking I, at a few of mine, predict- and I thought... Oh yeah, yeah. Of all the bold predictions, we made some ridiculous bold predictions, and I gotta say, I think we did pretty freaking good. And let's go over it. Let's talk about it. Let's do this. This will be fun. So obviously, let's talk about the first one. Let's let's get it out the way. I said that with the three receivers in Pittsburgh, that I thought Roethlisberger would have a a quarterback, a top twenty quarterback season. Okay, and. And then I dumped his ass about halfway through the season because I said he just can't throw the ball. I mean, yeah. I gave up on Mr. Ben. But do you guys know where Big Ben is in the quarterback rankings right now? Do you know, John? I don't. Don't want tell to me. Want to look right now. Take a look. Number eighteen. Number eighteen. Holy shit, that's top twenty. It is top 20, as ridiculous as that seemed at the time, and halfway through the season, it actually came through. So, that's ridiculous, but it it came through. But you know what else I said, which didn't come through? I mean, if I'm going to brag, i got to also talk shit about myself. I said, we all obviously all liked all three Pittsburgh receivers, but I specifically liked three rookie receivers, Jefferson, Claypool, and I think the other one was uh, C.D. Lamb. And I said they'd all be top 10. Now, C.D. Lamb slightly out of the top 10. Jefferson came through. But Claypool, man, that guy, no. no, no I completely no. bombed on Claypool. He was garbage all year. He's, you know, I don't garbage. even know. He's, yeah, he's garbage. So, poo on that one. But now let's yeah, talk about yeah. some predictions you guys made, all right? Let me talk about my running backs real quick. 
Let's talk about running backs. Let's talk about running backs. Which one do you want to talk about, John? I got two I want to talk about because I, I made this big, bold prediction as to who would have the most fantasy points in the AFC and in the NFC. You did. Um, currently, both of those are second place in their respective divisions. So I said, mix it in. You're welcome, Tony Brooks. Yep, thank uh, you. Finishes the top point getter in the AFC. He's second. There's no shot of getting first, by the way, because Jonathan Taylor is so far behind. In the NFC, though, number two point getter, Zeke. Zeke is the mm-hmm. number two point getter in the NFC. And Leonard Fournette's ahead of him only by a few points. And he'll probably, well, he's not going to play the rest of the season. So I would say my bold prediction of Zeke being the NFC the point getter, leading point getter for running backs will come true. So I was going to bust your ass about Zeke because of the things you said. And then I looked and I noticed exactly what you noticed. He's actually going to lead the <laughs> NFC in points. Yes. Incredibly. After all that, Zeke, you know, he, he hasn't looked great at times. But really, he's had a pretty good year. It's been good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we we bragged on you, Johnny. Now we got to talk a little shit. All right. Sure. All right. Let's let's talk about one of the things you did say, and this one's bad. Uh, Ryan Tannehill would be a top three quarterback. Your words, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> that one was a bomb. <laughs> that was a bomb. That was a bomb. That was a bomb. What can you say? Um, it's not bad, know. though, man. I still you, you get him wrong. You get him wrong. We didn't know AJ Brown was going to miss half the season, yeah. and we didn't. Yeah, know. we thought Julio I, was actually going to do something, right? Like we like, thought Julio was going to struggle, but man, Julio's been just crud. Obsolete. <laughs> Awful. Awful. And we also didn't know Derrick Henry was going to go out for the season. They were going to stack the, you know, just all right. Yeah. All right, That's Tony. Awesome. Tony, I want to brag on you, my man. Because you said something at the time that sounded, I mean, it wasn't crazy, but it was it was ballsy. You said that the, the trio in Cincinnati at receiver of Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, and Chase, those would be your the best trio in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And damn it, you were right on the money. Those are the best three wide receiver. It's the best trio in the NFL. And that includes all the ones we listed earlier in the season. They beat them all. So congratulations to you. You absolutely nailed that bold prediction. It's not now. the only one I got, right? <laughs> no, you got, you actually, I got you a did few. It. I got a few. You got a few. You did. Yeah. You said, and I quote, Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs would both finish respectively at their position in the lower bottom ten. Okay? Yeah. You nailed yeah. Stefan Diggs. He's he's wide receiver nine. You freaking <laughs> nailed it. Now you missed on Josh Allen. He's uh I think he's quarterback two right now. But uh you nailed Stefan Diggs. So again, Got a little yin and yang there, you know. You I'll got some, it. you got some stuff right. But I think the one you bombed on the worst, you said Corey Davis would get a thousand yards. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what though? You know what? If he didn't get hurt and he didn't suffer some COVID stuff, maybe he would have, because he wasn't doing bad when he's played. He's been pretty. He hasn't been terrible. He had a couple decent games, but yeah, had a couple decent games. Yeah, yeah I, don't, he did. I, don't, I don't know if he'd been in the one K club. I'll give him 800. Let's go back. I'll say 800. How's that? I want to talk <laughs> about my, bold, my boldest prediction, which could still come true. Do it, Johnny. I said that Jalen Hurts would have more fantasy points than Kyler Murray. I was going to bring that up next because at the yeah. time, we all went, you got to be freaking cr- kidding me. Yeah. And it yeah. looked stupid after three or four weeks when number one quarterback in our league <laughs> was, was Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray. But tell, tell, right tell now, the people, Chuck. Talk to him about Kyler it. Kyler Murray is quarterback 11, and Jalen Hurts is quarterback 12, Tony. I did and, not know that. Really? And let's put it this way. Jalen Hurts missed a game. I don't think Kyler Murray's missed a game, has he? he no, he did. Yeah, he missed they both, yeah, they he both missed a game. Yeah. But yeah. in most leagues, not in our league, because we, we do uh, efficiency, and we have uh, other stats that other leagues don't have. But in most leagues around the world, Jalen Hurts did outscore Kyler Murray. So congratulations, John. You nailed wow. that one. Thanks. Thank you, guys. And that was the ballsiest of all the predictions, I think. <laughs> that was, that was insane. Yeah. Of course, I also think Miles Gaskin would finish as a top 10 running back. You did. I may have been wrong. 
there. Uh, I might have missed that <laughs> a little bit. Close. All well, right, you know it's going to be at least be better than that though than he is right oh, now. Oh, he's so bad, dude. He's not. He's not that bad though. He's running back twenty-two, which is a, a, a RB two in fantasy football. So it's not really that bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Now let's let's talk about a couple of predictions I made. I'm going to brag first. I sure. said, and I quote, Carson Wentz would finish as a top 15 quarterback, and you all laughed at me. And then I said, on the same team, Michael Pittman would be a quarterback, or excuse me, a wide receiver two in fantasy football. Carson Wentz is right now quarterback 14. 14. And Michael Pittman is wide receiver 21, which is a, is uh, running, really? a wide receiver two. Yes, he is. Mm, wow. So I nailed that. Mm. I, I wow. nailed it. Yeah. So, so that's just how low the numbers really are in football this season. <laughs> That's how crazy it is. Yeah. It, yeah. It, you know what? Yeah. It's true. These wow. guys survived and, and got through without getting injured and being on the COVID list. And that's why they're in there. You know what I mean? Right. But I mean, right. what I said, he's got 971 yeah. yards on the season. That's not too shabby. Man. He's going to be a thousand yard receiver. Yeah. And he had a couple games. He had multiple, uh, multiple touchdown games. So he's doing yeah. pretty well. Now, where I fucking shit the bed. I said Quez Watkins would be the number, the leading receiver on the Eagles. And I said he would be a wide receiver three in fantasy football, which re means top yeah. 36. Fail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fail, fail, fail. He's had a few big catches, but other than that, he's been garbage. So I, I completely yeah. whiffed on that. Yep. All right. Uh, let's go back to Tony. Mm -hmm. Tony, you said, and this is true. And the way you said it was weird at the time. I was like, what? You said, of the Bengal receivers, you liked T. Higgins the best. And you said, from week five on, T. Higgins would be the best receiver on the Bengals. And I was like, what the? Why did he say week five on? So yeah, I went back and looked. And from week five on, T. Higgins is the best receiver on the Bengals. And he's he's been a top, I think, five receiver in the NFL in the last, like, ten so congratulations, Tony. You freaking nailed that one. Thanks. I don't know the how. Main, the main reason I said that was because I knew that Burrow was going to be going to Jamar at first, you know, trying. And then, and then T. Higgins and his – I think he's a little bit more talented and a little bit more I experienced. So and so then he good. was going to put two and two together and be like, I, I got to get the ball to Higgins. Jamar yeah. can't keep up this pace every week. He's young. You know, things are going to happen. And that's why I said week five. Good for you, man. Freaking yeah. nailed that one. That, that was a good one. All right. Um, of all the predictions, I, I don't have any more bad ones that you made, Tony. I didn't write anything down. So let's move James on. Connor. Let's talk about oh, James Conner. <laughs> what did you say about James Conner? Well, excuse me. Sorry, I dropped some crap. Um, I I put him down as like you, you, we had a, a a segment where you're like, who would you never draft ever ever draft again, no matter what? And mine was James Conner. I was like, I will never draft that guy. He has failed me a million times. And um, I'm very happy for the kid, dude. You know, he's had a rough life, actually. And he's yeah. prevailed. So good for him and good for the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. But I'm shocked that he's looked as good as he has. But, yeah, I, I couldn't stand that guy. And now he's great. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it was good. Uh, okay, let's talk about a couple of predictions I made and then a couple that Johnny made. First, uh, I said... When we were doing our quarterback rankings, I said Patrick Mahomes was not my number one quarterback. And you guys said, why? Who's your number one quarterback? And I said, Patrick Mahomes is going to fall just a little bit because I was a little worried about the loss of his receiver. Um, who was the receiver that used to be? Watkins. He's now yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Watkins. And yeah. then I said I was a little worried that Kelsey was a year older and there would there'd be a small, like just a little bit, uh, of a fall for Patrick Mahomes. So I, I was very, very uh, good on that one. And then I said, you, you guys asked me, who's going to finish number one? And I said, either Kyler Murray or Josh Allen would finish one. And I said, I liked Herbert two and then Mahomes. Well, right now it's Tom Brady one, Josh Allen two, and Herbert three. And I think, as you guys have been watching, Brady's been sliding just a little each week for the last three or four weeks due to all the injuries, and there's a good chance that Josh Allen and Herbert could pass him in the next two weeks. So I'm very close on that one. And Mahomes number four. 
And Mahomes is number four. And I had him three. But uh yeah, if I, I didn't I did five. Joey Burrow. Joey okay. Burrow. Because he Incredible. jumped like a bunch in the last week. He scored ninety nine points. You mean when you scored ninety eight points in our, in our league? <laughs> you're gonna go pretty high. Bit. Yeah. Yep. All right. Now I want to talk about the bad for me, and that's Austin Eckler. I said a million times, yes, he catch he'll catch eighty balls, but where are the touchdowns? Where are the touchdowns gonna be? And I thought he's you know, I actually drafted him on the second round and I traded him. I wanted to get rid of him because I thought he'd get hurt. Well, he, he really didn't get hurt. He missed he's missed one game, but I think it was due to COVID. It's not even due to injury. Um, so I was completely wrong on Austin Eckler. He's a top five running back. So, boo. That was a bad one. <laughs> John has nothing to say. I didn't fully disagree with you, though. Yeah, I didn't either, personally. actually. I, I, I always kind of thought of him as a third down back. And, uh, yeah, I think we were all At wrong. least to the injury – Thing too. I mean, there were several yeah, times this year where like, oh shit, I would text you guys like, there, you know, there goes Eckler, he's hurt. And then all of a sudden you see him on the sidelines stretching and getting ready to come back in. I'm like, the past couple of seasons, that's not the case. He was down yeah. for the count, not this year. Yeah, props to him. I think he worked really hard on his body and uh, it paid off. He, and he's good back. I mean, and he's getting touchdowns, he's getting the goal line work, mm -hmm. all the stuff mm -hmm. I, I thought he wasn't going to get. So, yep. Uh, John, you nailed this one. You said, Quote, Saquon Williams, or Saquon Barkley, pardon me, will not be a top 20 running back. And you said you will not draft him. You don't want any part of him. Any part. And you, you freaking nailed it because Saquon Barkley, who has played every game, by the way, except one. Yeah. It, running back 31, which is horrible. For a guy that's played that many games and he's still running back 31, Awful. you nailed that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you didn't want any part of that guy, and uh, good call. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. If only the owners would have listened to you that drafted Saquon Barkley. I was glad they, they did because it was somebody who was drafted, and I got a better player for it. So. Someone fell to you because of that. That's right. That's right. Now, the one you completely bombed on, one last one. This is the last one, guys. Johnny said Juwan Johnson, tight end of the Saints, would finish as a uh, top 10 tight end. <laughs> he should have if they would have played him right he could have yeah. easily he's got he had all the makings the physical talent the speed the size uh could have easily been a kittle type or a, a kelsey type or one of those guys he doesn't use him oh, he's so. very athletic there's no doubt about it they just need a quarterback yeah they do the, the, it doesn't matter which quarterback plays they're either not good or they're guys that don't even like to throw the ball, that run the ball all the time. And then Taysom Hill, he, he yeah. doesn't throw enough, right? He's not going to get enough targets, enough looks. So, yep. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So, overall, I thought we did pretty good with our bowl predictions. There were not more. Bad. Bad. Yeah, I, I figured we'd save some for another show later in the season. But the ones that we, we came out with tonight, that was pretty good, man. I thought, the, I thought we did a good job. So, congrats, guys, on some good predictions. And uh, let's wrap up the show, shall we? All right. I wanted to thank Tony, Sir Poops a lot, for coming back on the show. Nice job tonight, my man. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Johnny Ball game. Going with the cut. Bowl predictions. Let's go, Johnny. Appreciate you, man. Thanks, Chuck. Nom Thanks, man. All right. And I'm the Fantasy Reaper. And, guys, hit that like button, please. Make sure you comment if you have any questions or some content you want to see next week. Put it in the comments. Let us know what's up. Hit that notification bell. Okay? Make sure you subscribe because you want to know when we play the next video next week. And we'll be back next week for week 17. We'll talk about the, the, you know what happened in week 17. And we'll get you prepped for the final week if you play in fantasy football. We do. We play week 18. If you do, come join us next week. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year Enjoy football. Good luck in the championship, guys. All right? Good luck. And Good luck. Good luck. All right, see you guys. Thanks for watching. Good luck in the championship, except for you, Royce. Tune in next week for another episode of Fantasy Sports Island. Happy New Year.